what you and me will eventually see that's gonna make it all worthwhile is that accident rate. We're gonna see that fatal accident rate start to decline. It's gonna start its, its descent and that'll be a satisfying day. That Appreciate will. It. In the last five episodes of the series, we've covered some of the biggest fatal accident scenarios that continue to be leading causes in taking the lives of our fellow aviators in general aviation. Or you could use the OBS button. Or that, yep, that's another way. You know what this stands for? Omnidirectional bearing selector, but what's, what's your answer? <laughs> Orange Blossom Special. <laughs> My four days spent with Dan and Brenda were eye-opening for me because it taught me a ton not only about AQP Grassroots and how I operate as a CFI, but also how Dan the man himself operates. Though that last part remains a mystery to this day as I witness firsthand fiddle players and crazy dinner scenes kind of seem to just happen. That's it. You guys are in the video, no doubt. Absolutely. Aviation 101, we're here. I concluded that if you can forgive his obnoxious guitar playing and random bars and bad manners, he really has this whole grassroots effort thing figured out. So we've seen different parts of this AQP flight review in depth, but in this video, we're gonna zoom out and look at the big picture. I'm gonna walk you through how I would conduct one of these AQP flight reviews from start to finish. If you're a pilot, share this video with your instructor and ask for this type of material on your next flight review. If you're an instructor, introduce this material to your pilots and students. Throughout this entire video, I'll be referring to the AQP supplement document that's available on aviation101.com. It lays out the format for all the questions about each topic, an outline of all these fatal accident scenarios, and even an in-depth explanation of each scenario completed with a solution to the problems, sample accident report, reports and video links. It's all in that document. To go along with that supplement document is the AQP flight review checklist in the form of a 50 sheet notepad. Head over to the e-store and grab some of those, download that AQP PDF as well, and you're all set. Let's dive into it. The basic minimum requirements for a flight review as laid out in 14 CFR 6156 calls for one hour flight instruction and one hour ground instruction. That includes a review of general operating rules of part 91. The AQP flight review works best with an hour long briefing before the flight where we discuss the scenarios applicable to the pilot, but ideally plenty of time should be allocated to the briefing. This is all new material and there are going to be questions. Give at least an hour of flight instruction in the airplane, practice those scenarios, and then a short debrief session after the flight to talk about what we did and how to continue practicing this stuff going forward. A solid AQP flight review is ideally an extensive full day with two briefings and two flights. How's it going? Good, Good to see you again. Hang your neighbor. Long time no see. <laughs> As Dan has said a bunch in the past and he's passing this on to me so I can start teaching it, we're not inventing new ways to kill ourselves. We're doing today what we're calling an AQP AFR. Sounds like a big acronym. Advanced Qualification Program Annual Flight Review is what we're calling it. And what the heck is that? We have a PDF right here. You can download this at aviation101.com. This is a guide of everything that we're gonna step through on this flight review. The instructor should start the briefing by getting to know the pilot. Ask when they got into flying, what ratings they have, aircraft they normally fly, what type of flying they normally do, specify day, night, mountain flying, local cross country, etc. You just kinda wanna get a good feel for what kind of pilot they are and what kind of flying they do. The purpose of this is so you don't spend too much time on the topics that aren't relevant to that pilot. For example, if they don't fly multi-engine airplanes, we're not gonna discuss the VMC rollover scenario. Page 14 of the AQP supplement document lays out each of these fatal accident scenarios. The left column contains all the scenarios that are classified as CFIT, or controlled flight into terrain. The right column is UFIT, or uncontrolled flight into terrain. We'll look at, if we look at this document here, and we look at the left side, we got a column on the left and a column on the right. At the top of the left-hand column, it classifies all of these accident scenarios as accidents where the controls were still working at impact. On the right-hand side, these are classified as controls not working at the time of impact. We've got 18 possible fatal accident scenarios here. We're gonna step through these and talk about which ones are relevant to you, which ones are not. In the AQP document, each topic has a series of questions associated with it. And after the instructor and pilot have determined which topics are relevant for this flight review, you can use these questions associated with the relevant topics to guide the conversation and hit the important concepts with each one. These questions don't need to be worded exactly how they are in the document. They're merely there to be a guide to help lead the conversation to touch all the important points about each each of these fatal scenarios. 
The questions are designed to lead the pilot to their own logical conclusion that what we've been doing doesn't make sense, and that as is, we are not prepared for that particular scenario. The idea here is to step through all of these possible fatal accident scenarios and check the ones that apply to the pilot, and use the questions listed under each scenario to guide the instructional conversation about each one. Some of these scenarios will apply to all pilots, regardless of their experience or ratings. And along with discussing the questions for each of the relevant topics, we want to go ahead and brief the pilot now on some of the drills we're going to run through in the airplane. So the way we're going to practice loss of thrust on takeoff in the airplane, we're going to go to a safe altitude. There's three steps to combating this problem of loss of thrust on takeoff. Three steps. Step one is to save your life. When you lose power, you lose your engine. As soon as you lose your power, save your life. Push the nose down. Get that nose down. You need to get light in your seat. Step two is to pitch for best glide. And the reason I put emphasis on pitch is something I'll highlight here in just a second. Third step is, you know, you're all you're, you're established on best glide and the, the situation is handled. The threat is neutralized of a stall spin. Then you can decide what to do all the while still flying the airplane. Mm -hmm. After the briefing and reviewing some part 91 rules and requirements, of course, comes the flight. The previous parts of the series dove into the details about how we can execute and practice a lot of the scenarios on the AQP flight review. To see the full length uninterrupted flight videos, which are well over an hour long each, you can join up at Cockpit Club and see them under the exclusive content if you're interested. Like I said, those are the raw, uncut versions of these flight reviews with these pilots, so if you're interested in sitting through those, that's where they'll be. In the AQP document, there's a sample flight profile for the flight portion of one of these flight reviews. Think of it like a checklist. I personally am a sucker for a good checklist that will keep things organized, so we turn this flight profile into a checklist notepad. It comes in sheets of 50 that fit right onto a kneeboard, and as a flight instructor, I think this really keeps my thoughts organized without a loose piece of paper that I have to hold on to. You can grab these notepads for yourself at aviation101.com store. First, I gave the pilots a rejected takeoff. My fuel flow is low, my RPMs are low, abort. Then after departure, I told them to get on the gauges to simulate IMC after takeoff, and I threw a distraction at them to try and get them space disoriented. I think my pin rolled under the fire extinguisher. Can you grab that for me? You took your eyes off the panel. Yeah. That was a trick. That was a trick. I then failed some primary flight instruments to get them thinking about how to handle an abnormal situation like that. So if, if this were to happen in flight, what would your first reaction here? My first reaction would be to level the airplane. If I have my airspeed, so I know I'm good here, I've got my AI, and I'm, I know I'm still climbing. As a CFI, I want to utilize every little bit of time in the airplane as a teaching moment. So while we're cruising to the practice area for some loss of thrust drills, that's a perfect time to get the pilot thinking about accessing information and about how they can arm themselves with all that information about their destination airport and runways with the tools available on ForeFlight. We got some dead space right now between here and Lockhart, right? And we've got what a pilot 30 years ago could only dream of right between your thumbs right there. It was 4,000 feet, 75 feet wide. There's a uh, heavy on both ends of the runway. Uh, I forget, I think one of them's out of service, but... So good, the point there is to is when you've got this dead space, you know, you, you, you're low workload, you're not in the pattern, you're not dealing with the traffic, so get on your iPad and let's check out what kind of runway are we going to deal with here. Out in the practice area, we were pitching the airplane up for a departure climb and simulating power loss to demonstrate to the pilot just how quickly you need to push the nose down in order to save your life in a loss of thrust on takeoff situation. All right, we're going to lose the engine, we're going to push. Unload that wing. Now we're going to ease the nose back up to about minus three degrees, somewhere right in there. Okay, you lost your power. Lie it in your seat. Lie it in your seat. Save your life. Get that airspeed back up. And then pitch for a best glide. Very graceful. Perfect. On the way back, we once again filled the cruise time with some conversations about traffic and terrain using the information and tools we have right there in the cockpit. Coming back into San Marcos, I'd purposely have the pilot overshoot their final approach turn to demonstrate where the fatal loss of speed awareness usually happens. Let's go ahead and turn final. All right, now. All right, Oop, overshot. I'm still watching my airspeed. All right. So this is where people can really kill themselves, That's exactly right? right? Left, put that left rudder in, left cross control stall. We wouldn't be doing all this effort if we weren't 
crashing airplanes at this exact point where you are right now. This is where they're falling out of the sky. Right here is where they add back pressure. Getting down toward the runway, a go around is yet another scenario that can become fatal in a hurry if the pilot messes it up. Let's go around. Let's go around. Okay. Positive rate of climb. First notch of flaps comes up. A good topic to end the flight on is practicing what we briefed about the four items that define a stabilized approach and apply those to demonstrate a stabilized approach to a full stop landing. And now you can get the airplane set up into your stabilized approach. Short approach, clear to land, we're on runway 13 and 18 Delta. All of that right there was consistently just over an hour in the airplane. Once we were all finished up with the flight, we took about 15 minutes to debrief what was done right and what needs work. That's what the whole debrief notes section of the notepad is for. This is a perfect time to answer any questions or comments the pilot might have for the instructor as well. The key to being a great instructor is not only to be a good teacher, but to be a good listener too. Take your time to answer questions and be open to taking feedback as well. That's always an opportunity I like to take to improve myself as a person, and as a flight instructor. In part one, we introduced Dan Greider, our pilots, and the overarching reason as to why we're doing this whole AQP grassroots movement. Part two was all about rejected takeoffs. Part three covered spatial disorientation, IMC after takeoff, and mishandled abnormal situations in the cockpit. Part four addressed fatal loss of thrust on takeoff and loss of speed awareness accidents. And part five addressed terrain avoidance, loss of primary flight instruments, and autopilot failures. That's a lot of information to digest, so I wanted this video, part six, to zoom out and look at the structure of one of these grassroots AQP flight reviews from start to finish. Uh, this AQP AFR is not the graduation, this is the start yes. of your education. That Today is right. it's just an introduction of, of what the task is. Yep. So, it, it, by no stretch of the means does, does this mean that everything is totally done. This no. is just an eye-opening thing for you to think about. Now we're going to go back to the debrief table. We're going to look at some of the stuff, the notes I made, the pictures that I took, and we're going to talk about ways to make you even better. Remember, just because the FAA only requires a flight review every 24 calendar months doesn't mean you have to wait that long for your next one. Do them every six months. That's my recommendation. Your life and your passengers' lives depend on this stuff. Don't just do the bare minimum. Step it up. Log your voluntary efforts with this type of training on the page in the back of your PDF and include it with your insurance renewal. It can't hurt your premium. I don't know who's learned more out of this exercise, the students or Josh. I've learned a lot. I have learned a lot. I'm watching the light bulb come on. Oh, it's coming on, yeah. I got to watch the light bulb come on and figuring out that's what he said, that's what this means, I get it. It right. only takes once and you're down to, I and get you it. got it, yeah. I, yeah, I get it, which is really cool to watch. It's the first time I've ever done flight instruction for a flight instruction, giving, giving flight instruction. This entire series was engineered as a guide for both pilots and instructors to start the conversation to address the general aviation fatal accident rate and what we can do as a community to be a part of the solution. No regs, no rules changing, no new or tighter requirements, just pilots and instructors taking all of our lives more seriously than we did before. That is what we want and that is AQP Grassroots. What you and me will eventually see that's gonna make it all worthwhile is that accident rate. We're gonna see that fatal accident rate start to decline and that'll be a satisfying day. That Appreciate will. It. Please share this video and series everywhere you can. We wanna get the word out about this grassroots movement to save lives. And that starts right here with you. So please share this with every pilot you know. I encourage you to go download the AQP supplement document if you haven't yet and go grab some of those AQP flight review checklists on the Aviation 101 eStore. Adopt this training concept and revisit it every six months to make sure that you're ready for that fatal scenario that's gonna surprise you when you least expect it. Be ready to save your life. If you'd like to support what we do here on Aviation 101, you can shop merch and gear at the eStore and you can join the exclusive community on Cockpit Club to see monthly live streams, giveaways, and exclusive content of which are the full length briefings, flights, and debriefs with all of the pilots from this series. Be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss future content like this right here on Aviation 101. It's free to subscribe so do consider it. Until next time, everyone, I want you to stay happy, healthy, and current, and most importantly, you guessed it, stay proficient. Think about how much your and your passengers' lives are worth. Are you gonna be ready to save them? Fly safe, we'll see you in the next one.